Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Matilda, and today I thought we should do a review of this book. I read this book for the past three weeks, maybe two, but three, three weeks, and I feel like I'm done. I read it before, and like when I when I first started, when I bought it, I think I saw it on Dumin Tudeng's. Um, I saw it on Dumin Tudeng's video I'll link it below hopefully I won't forget but I'll link it below so I thought you know what let me get it for myself because I've been interested in reading it and it was just like a reminder that you know what go get that book because you've been it's been on my wish list for so long so I read it and now I picked it up again I don't know how long it's been I'm reading it again for the sake of doing a review of the book when I first when I first read this book I was um what's the word I was starstruck or something I don't know what the word is but like I was I was excited to read it like i i was like so like yo i can't wait to read that book and i was like yo once i got it once i was able to buy it i was like yes let's let's just dive right into it usually sometimes i buy books and then i keep them on my shelf for like a long time so i i read the book and i thought ah, i don't know I read the book again and at the beginning thought that me if reading a book again is always a level tedious but I'll say it was tedious it was it felt like ah yeah you okay like get to the point like I hear you and I'm like okay okay like let's get to it uh but anyway the first thing that I picked up that I pinpointed or highlighted was this part where it says I'm miserable I'm still a little ashamed to be telling you that right now I'm miserable who in the hell do I think I am a why now that's who a great big old whiner person you know who gets to be miserable I, I, sh I know the book of this girl so I'm just gonna butcher it or say it in Sejuana and say Malala because someone shot her in the face you know who else the who the Chiba school girls the um, because the terrorist group Boko Haram kidnapped them from school for forced marriage which is like just like regular marriage except exactly the opposite and full of rape and no one cares anymore you know who else and Frank because she and about six million other Jewish people were murdered by Nazis and Mother Teresa because everyone else was too lazy to treat the other person so she had to do it um it's pretty shameful for me to sit around saying I'm miserable when there are no bullets in my face and no one's kidnapped me or killed me or left me alone to treat all the lepers and I think uh, listen okay this is what I keep saying to people this is what I I I preach or I believe in I believe that your problems are your problems hear what I'm saying like your problems are yours you you can't take your problems and compare them to other people like this whole thing you're know, like hey get her get thing when I when I go to type thing or hey when I to or hey when I you know what I mean it's like 
let's stop comparing ourselves to other people stop comparing good it's like when a person when you're crying because you lost your loved ones for example and a person tells you dude why are you crying over one person you've lost one person there are people who have lost like five people at a go like had to bury five people at a go and it's like okay so you still lost that one person and that's your problem in your life what i'm saying is don't undermine your problems or other people's problems because you feel like they are bigger problems like if and i have a problem that's like I have to deal with me I have to deal with that problem it's it's a no-brainer like that that's my problem that's the life I've lived um, my problems cannot be equivalent to Beyonce's problems my problems cannot be equivalent to my neighbors problems my problems cannot be equivalent to my friends problems to uh, who else? To Shonda Rhimes problems, to Mother Teresa's problems. We live different lives. We lead different lives. So with this, like the point that I'm driving home is everyone has their problems. And let's let's not undermine other people's problems or make other people feel ashamed or feel guilty because their problems seem smaller than other people's problems. It's still the biggest problem they've had so far in their uh, in their life. You get that's that's all I'm saying. So like, if you have a problem, if you feel miserable, feel miserable. It's it's it's, it's the life you're living for you. It's the life and the problem that you are faced with. Well, maybe if you trade lives, but. You can't do that. Okay, so this is the, my other thing, my takeaway. My other takeaway is there's no way, there's no way to plan, there's no way to hide, there's no way to control this. Not if I'm saying yes to everything, yes to everything is scary. Oh my god, I didn't do like a proper intro to the book. The, the book, the gist of the book is that her sister told her she never says yes to anything that like she's presented with so many opportunities to go to like different events meet different people be interviewed by people could have just so many opportunities to just be out there in the world or be living life J and she always just says no she's always saying oh no I'm busy oh no that oh no you know she's saying no so she made a challenge to herself to say yes to all opportunities the things that scare her the things that freak her out the things that are so out of her comfort zone because she's an introvert she claims to be an introvert um so yeah no got not if there's no way to play there's no way to hide there's no way to control this not if i'm saying yes to everything yes to everything the carry and I think sometimes we need to challenge ourselves that way to step out of our comfort zone if saying it, it doesn't necessarily mean saying yes to everything for you for a different person stepping out of your comfort zone could be saying no because people pleasing and all that so for you the challenge could be saying no it makes you uncomfortable if it makes you uncomfortable because you're saying yes all the time that people are asking for whatever they're asking for and you're saying yes a challenge could be saying no or just what scares you what freaks you out and saying yes to the things that take you out of your comfort zone take you out of character things that just freak you out and you do it hands shaking um tears running down your face there's this part where she talks about christina i if you've watched grace and anatomy you'll be aware of the character christina young so christina young christina young um so she was talking about uh her exiting in season in season 10 
leaving the show in season 10 and she says Christina's Jenny Christina realizes Burke is handing her the keys to the kingdom I realize why Christina's journey can end. I realize why it is time to let this character go and be happy for her. Christina has learned what she needs to know. Her toolbox is full. She has learned to not let go the pieces of herself that she needs in order to be what someone else wants. She's learned not to compromise. She's learned not to settle. She's learned uh, as difficult as as difficult as it is to be her own son and honestly I love how Christine I love the whole character yeah Christine I mean not the part where she doesn't have feelings like not the part where she she's almost a robot and she really has feelings but she she was okay. I loved her character. Her character was extraordinary because <sighs> you know she 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 didn't want to get married and you know how that beats the odds of society of human like we all know women aspire to get married that's that thing you know and so she beat that odd she didn't want to get married she didn't want to have kids okay actually she didn't want to have kids she wanted to get married but she didn't want to have kids yeah hmm. yeah but what i'm saying is with christina her character was so she was period driven and and that was the thing that made her happy and it was okay you know what i mean because as a woman especially you have to always be told to aspire to get married and have kids and that's the fairy tale ending we see it everywhere we see it in all the disney movies it's always the princess waiting for the frog waiting for the prince to be rescued damsel in distress type life and it's like okay but you know feminism and I inject a little feminism and into that you know um yeah I'm not gonna get into that you watch the you watch Grey's Anatomy and you see Christina Young in all her glory or if you it says I did it I said yes to something that terrified me and then I did it and I didn't die and like that is that is my life that is my motto I don't even know that is something that I see a lot when a person is afraid to do something I'm like listen no one will die okay if no one dies then it's okay for you to do it just go for it if no one dies shout if no one dies we're fine we're good we're good to go come on now hmm? you okay you'll be afraid and you will do something hands shaking um throat dry tears running down your face maybe pee running down your leg okay you will come out you will come to the other side you will come to the other side and realize phew i did that and no one died absolutely no one died the biggest I feel like this is the biggest takeaway for me it's the part that was talking directly at me and if there's if I read this part and don't read anything else the message was in like this this was meant for people such as us such as me the dreamers at heart and it says dreams are for losers it's the speech she had to give at Dartmouth at Dartmouth at Dartmouth's um, graduation so the commencement speech of it 
she had to uh, do that and the, the, <laughs> the title of the speech is dreams of dreams are for losers that's it dreams of losers like I can't tell you I think you can either get the book or look for the dead myth commencement speech given by Shonda Rhimes on YouTube I think it's there and you can because I don't want to spoil it for anyone but like that's it dreams are for losers dreams are for losers stop dreaming and start doing i consider myself a dreamer like it's 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 something that i do i'm a dreamer i'm a planner i just dream and then i don't do so reading this gave me that like i don't know that kick in the ass yeah that kick in the butt and that that um fire on my bat like light up light up fire up my ass type thing to say listen stop dreaming do 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 because do the hell with dreams as I'm learning because obviously I'm still like moving from the dreaming to the doing um the thing about dreaming is you're just gonna be there dreaming and planning and doing everything but then life never goes according to plan life never goes according to dreams and all that so ditch the dream and be a doer that's the only way you can be able to know what works and what doesn't you know trial and error type thing and that's the only way you can be able to actually get your dream to reality spend more time doing and less time dreaming hey this is my favorite one i mean okay i just talked about the doing one and <laughs> yes but that's my favorite one it says hmm, why do i even stop with this okay god bless the soul of whitney houston but i spent an our every single morning for all every single morning of all four years of high school in front of the mirror trying to get my hair to look exactly like Whitney's hair I was in hours of my life given over to a hot curling iron and a bottle of hairspray and bent fingertips I was I was at a salon I, I skipped some parts I, would ha I was at a hair salon in Los Angeles five or six years ago after graduation from college for some reason we came up in the usual hair salon gossip I casually mentioned to my hairdresser how much I loved her hairstyle when I was in high school and then spun the story uh, of my morning Whitney, Whitney ritual girl she shook her head you know that was a week she had on right you could probably buy it if you want to hold on let me check the wig catalog and show you <laughs> i did not hear another word she said i was lost thinking of the hours of wasted time and the gallons of wasted hair spray i relived the inevitable misery the feeling of failure and insecurity that came every morning when my hair wouldn't do what I was trying to bully. Oh, I was trying to bully it into doing. And if I had known, if I had just been told, no matter how hard I worked, my hair was never going to look like that. <clears throat> if I had only known that not even Whitney's hair could look like that. It, hmm. Um, I, I had to bite my lip hard to keep from bursting into tears right then and there in front of two ladies I didn't even know um <laughs> I didn't cry but it hurt the betrayal ran deep 
But I have to admit, there was a small sense of relief because now I knew I had not failed. I just didn't own the wig. And dude, 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 like this is. I don't know how. Could I don't know if if I wanna say this is freeing or what, but like. It's like a relief in a way, like it gives a relief for like okay, we thinking when I'm alive, you're gonna try. You're gonna see someone, especially on social media, this this era of social media, and you're gonna see someone living a certain type of life, living some type of life and then wish you you lived their life or like oh, oh, oh. way later and dude dude notice this the same way you you when you the same way you don't post things when like you are arguing with your significant other or with your family it, same way you don't post when you're crying or when you're sad the same way you don't post when something is going wrong it's this it applies to everyone this the moment we but how post you when you're sad when you're going through something when you're mm, like you don't post everyone does the same thing when they're going through something they don't post when they are crying they don't post when they're going through argument they don't post that we only post the good things, the memories, the things that we want to like, I don't know, remember or whatever. It's not like it's, 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 what is that? not even trying to pose perfection. No one is trying to pose perfection. They're just posting photos of them being happy, laughing, whatever. Like everyone does that. You get what I mean? And Rona, because we're the consumers of social media, we're gonna sit on social media and feel like, yo, this person lives a perfect life because all they post is just them smiling. But dude, you don't post yourself when you're sad, when you're crying. So why do you expect someone else to post themselves when they're crying? We all go through those things. We just don't post them. Like, it, it's not even rocket science. It's a normal, it's a thing. Every day when you post when you're sad, it's like, what's wrong with her? My dream was coming true. You know what happens when all your dreams come true? Nothing. I realized a very simple truth that success, fame, and having all my dreams come true would not fix or improve me. It wasn't an instant portion for personal growth. Having all my dreams come true only seemed to magnify whatever qualities I already possessed. Um, yes, I love this so much because sometimes we have this, these goals where we feel like, no, I'll be happy when I'll be uh, I'll be more confident when I lose weight for example I'll be more confident when I lose weight I'll be more confident when once my acne clears up I'll be more confident when when what when my body snatched but then yeah when my body snatched I'll be more confident when once this happens and it's like I'll be more confident once I make more money, I'll be more confident or I'll, I'll love myself more once, um, I don't know, what a specific thing happens. You can lose all the weight you want, you can have all the money in the world, you can, um, you can have all the money in the world, you can uh, be successful in every way, but... It will not fix you, it will not fix your trauma, so it will not fix how you feel about yourself. Like, if you hate yourself, you hate yourself. Having more money will make you like yourself any more. Like, it won't make you like yourself. Having, 